So I'm going to do that first. So for people who are new today, um, my name is Jackie Radkovic, and I am coming from Cold Lake, Alberta. Uh, I've lived here pretty much a lot of my uh, teaching career, and uh, I used to teach at Lakeland Catholic up here up north, and I really appreciate everybody showing up this morning. We had a great group of people yesterday um, talking in the chat, asking questions, responding, and I, I just want to let everybody know, like I did yesterday, a lot of this stuff is just an overview. We're trying to give you a lot of information at once. And so we kind of expect that after this, you have an opportunity to go peek and take a look and pull the things that meet the needs for you as a teacher. Um, we also want you to be aware that after these four days, there are the seven consortiums in the province, which we'll talk about later. And after today, uh, the seven consortiums and ARPDC as a group will be offering more uh, in-depth, I guess, hey, Yolanda, um, specific, maybe curricular, if you're looking for stuff on fractions or you're looking for stuff on decimals or, you know, linear equations, um, those will be more specific after these four days. Great. Madeline? Good morning. Bonjour, everyone. I'm Madeline Lemire. I'm with the Francophone Consortium, and uh, I won't be here with you the whole time today, but I get to, to be here for part of the morning with this uh, wonderful group supporting Yolanda and Jackie, sort of. I'm just along for the ride. They've got this. Um, I, we are very thankful that um, these ladies with this expertise have accepted to be part of uh, the ARPDC team and to lead this work for the province. So thank you to Yelena and Jackie. Um, and if Kathy with the K is here, hello to her as well. I didn't see her come in. My, uh, just a couple things. One, the Francophone Consortium and um, ARPDC. There is a toolkit in French that is available for math four to six. Lots of resources, keep your eyes open. We're meeting next week to set our dates for our series for your French immersion teachers um, so that they have support and access to all of these resources in French as well. Um, just on a closing note, another reminder, Yolanda said it a couple of times, it really helps us um, with attendance for our records, for our information to at least, if you could put, change your name, to at least have your first name and your last initial, that would be helpful. Um, and um, to do that, just hover over your picture, you'll, three, you'll see three white dots in a blue box, just click on there and you will see an option to rename. And on that note, I'll hand it back to you, Yelena. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Madeline. Um, in the spirit of reconciliation, we want to acknowledge that this gathering is taking place on traditional treaty lands across the province of Alberta, home to many diverse indigenous Métis and Inuit peoples. And we just did that. And we also have Tammy and Betty on the screen here, but Tammy and Betty will be leading the session tomorrow. Uh, so we will let them introduce themselves tomorrow. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Jackie, I guess we're gonna do this to, now because when I did redo, 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 <laughs> it went back to this place. Okay, so Jackie, go ahead. You can talk and then I'll just put it on. Sure. So uh, before uh, Yolanda puts this on, we, we just wanted you to be familiar with the seven um, consortiums that are under ARPDC. And even though we're seven consortiums, um, us as math leads especially work very closely together to help support the needs in the different areas and also collaborate to do provincial offerings like today. So we just wanna play this little three minute uh, video so that you can just be familiar with your area and then also be familiar with who you might need to contact in your area if you're looking for further support. Go ahead, Yolanda. Okay, just make sure I have my speakers set properly and here we go. Alberta Regional Professional Development Consortium, ARPDC, is comprised of six regional consortiums and one provincial microphone consortium. We've been supporting the professional learning needs of educators since 1995. 
AICDC is governed by the College of Alberta State Superintendent Board of Directors, who chair a provincial advisory committee of various educational partners. Alberta Education, AE, Alberta School Board Association, ASBA, Alberta School oh. Council's Association, ASBA, Association of Independent Schools and Colleges in Alberta, AISBA, Association of School Business Officials of Alberta, ASBOA, post-secondary institutions offering education. It sounds a little low, so I'm just going to allow myself to just describe that. Now, who you're seeing coming across here, these are all our partners on our governing board. So ARPDC is governed by all of those people sit at the board at PAC and by the College of Alberta School Superintendents. Learning opportunities to Alberta educators. As a collective, the seven consortia executive directors and their teams provide service to school authorities across the province. Each consortium serves a different region of the province. Northwest Regional Learning Consortium, office located in Grand Prairie. Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium, office located in Edmonton. Learning Network Educational Services, office located in Loch Labiche. Central Alberta Regional Consortium, office located in Red Deer. Calgary Regional Consortium, office located in Calgary. Southern Alberta Professional Development Consortium, office located in Lethbridge. Consortium Provincial Francophone, office located in Calgary. Learning opportunities and supports are provided for and in partnership with a variety of educational partners. We facilitate professional learning experiences to support a combination of local, regional, and provincial needs, including system, school education plans, priorities, initiatives, and their alignment with provincial curriculum, and the Alberta Education Business Plan. ARPDC provides and delivers support, such as face-to-face -face learning opportunities technology-mediated and virtual learning sessions, asynchronous e-courses, personalized coaching, organizing communities of practice, collaborative sharing sessions, resource development, website development, on-site consulting. Consortium continues to research trends and current developments in the field of education and share best practices with our stakeholders. Regional consortia are an important part of communicating and implementing education-focused initiatives. Understanding and collaborating with school districts and education authorities is integral to the designing of relevant personalized learning opportunities that honor provincial direction. The ARPDC continues to collaborate with Alberta Education and our regional partners to improve the professional learning of all education partners. Check out the arpdc.ab.ca website. There's a lot to explore throughout the province, whether it is raising awareness, creating resources and materials, or consultation and collaboration. The ARPDC makes contributions to adult learning for students' sake. Alberta Regional Professional Development. Well, sorry about the sound. I'm not quite sure what was going on there and what happened, but um, Jackie, do you want to add anything to that? No, that's just great. And then when when I when I start showing you the resources, there'll be places for you to click on the links of your different consortiums so that you can either uh, enroll in some professional development or if you need to contact any of us, uh, I'll show you where to do that when I show you some of the resources. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so the agenda for today is to talk about the difference between numeracy and math and then to show you some numeracy and progressions and how they are different. And also, we'd like to go through some of the great resources that uh, have been put together for you, the teachers of Alberta, through the ARPDC. Um, so, um, there's only two things that I wanted to note from um, the ARPDC video that was just on. One is the uh, Cark office has now been moved to Pinoca. Am I right, Ma Madeline? Yes. And now the um, we do have an executive director for all of the consortiums who is executive de director of ARPDC. Um, when COVID happened, we realized that we are able to do these sessions virtually. 
And so there's a lot of sessions, like for example, for this one, there's no reason in redoing it for every single consortium when we could do it for the entire province at one time. So that's why uh, you'll be seeing more of the ARPDC uh, symbol everywhere you look. But we do still have our seven consortiums that are uh, providing professional development and support for local consortium. Okay, um, so let's just start. Before we start again, um, research says that early literacy success is directly linked to later literacy success. And early numeracy success is directly linked to later numeracy and literacy success. And so this research that was done by Duncan uh, in 2007 was done with 35,000 students across the United States. And what they found was that early numeracy is a better predictor of school success than early literacy. And so what that means is students that come into kindergarten and grade one and they have good uh, good early math skills, those they could predict that those kids were going to do better in school. It had, um, um, they also found that early literacy um, did not have a direct link to later um, numeracy skills. They, but they did find that early numeracy had a direct link with er, uh, later literacy skills. So I'm not saying that, you know, if you're a young parent and you're teaching your children how to read, I'm not saying, and I don't, nowhere in this studies does it say that, um, that uh, you should stop reading to your kids. It's saying you need to increase doing early math activities with kids and so things like um you know smaller larger in front of behind more less um and then just recognizing the the quantity for that three is more than two etc and so if anyone is interested oh. in that i uh, in this study i can actually provide a link at in the slides that we support that we give you at the end of the session so um i found that very very interesting that that's what they said but then here's that word again numeracy it keeps it keeps coming up and um what i want to do is talk about is are they talking about math or are they talking about numeracy skills and is there okay i see you do want it so i'll make sure that i find the link to it and i put it i'll put it in the slides at the end of today's session um so jackie can you tell people how to annotate um from their screen i was going to do a breakout room but then i find that sometimes people don't go into their breakout rooms so we're just going to do this as a group we have 99 people here but we're going to try what i want you to do actually jackie i'm going to ask you to find the annotate um oh, first okay i'll just i'm not if sure I... if i'm a co-host if i can do that yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. Like you should at the very bottom of your screen, if you don't see the word annotate, um, mm -hmm. scroll over to the word more, the three dots and just click on that. And you should be able to find in that list, annotate screen. Yeah. Uh, for me, no, under more it just says start focus mode. Did anyone find the annotate screen? Oh, yep. Some people are scribbling on the bottom. Yep. Oh, there they go. Okay. So whoever wrote yes, could you tell us where you found it? As uh, someone said, under at the top under view options someone else's it's a green pencil pencil left hand side because uh, oh, you can also i type. found it it's at the top view options 
drop down arrow, you'll see annotate. Thank you. Okay, can you also type? Can you find where you can type? Because I know it's a little bit hard to scribble. Oh, someone did, yep. You can put text. So after you pick annotate, you pick pick on the top. It has a T there for text, and that'll put you a text box in there. Okay, then I'm just gonna clear all the drawings for now. And what I would like you to do is just take some time to think about when I say the word math, what comes to your mind? What would you put in that yellow box? What would define something that belongs in the math column? And as you see, don't worry about being right or wrong. Just put in what do you what comes to your mind when you think of the word math? What would you be teaching in math? Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm going to stop because we're getting kind of filled up there. In the numeracy column, when I say that, for example, I could say I have a child who really did well in math, but is not numerate. What, what does that mean to you? What does, what is, what would a numerate person um, portray? What traits? What traits does a numerate person portray? Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. We're on our way here. Yesterday, Jackie was showing you in the uh, Alberta education. Um, Jackie was showing us that. Um, actually, hold on a second. No. Nope. Um, that Alberta Education has a link to numeracy progressions and literacy progressions. And so people often wonder, like, what does that mean? What would that mean to me if I'm looking for math outcomes versus numeracy progressions? Well, there is a difference. I'm going to show you, and I hope that you can hear this, but I'm going to tell you what you'll see in this video. This is a video from, um, oh, I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name, Jackie? Um, no, okay. Anyway, he. this is from the States, and he asks the question, how far apart is Junction 90 and Jefferson Boulevard? He asks his students this, and the the result he gets is the students actually don't know how to do this. And so I'm just going to show you this video so you can see. It's a very quick video. I hope you can hear. If not, then I'll just stop it and just tell you what happens, or I'll talk through it. Of course, I have to listen to the, sorry. Skip that. How far apart are these two exits on the freeway? Junction 90 and Jefferson Boulevard.
How many of you have seen your students struggle when you ask them a question and they're thinking, what are they asking me? Thanks. Okay. Not sure. Okay. Let's go back to this one. What is the answer to this fraction subtraction problem? One and one half minus one and one fourth. And he gets to work. I have to think about, okay, he, this, this is, I've seen this before. Okay, I know this whole thing. I have to do common denominators. I have to make an equivalent fraction. And now I can get the answer. So Four and four are the doses, so, but two times two equals two, so then you subtract and get it to work. Okay. Thank you very much. Alpha. So, there's a perfect example of a student who can do the math. Although it be slower and he doesn't know all the correct terms, he could do the math, but he couldn't apply it to real life situations. Did not know when do I use subtraction of fractions. I would say that would be a really great example of a student who's not numerate. But uh, how come this is happening? Uh, but is able to um do the math and that happens a lot in our classrooms and we will often hear teachers say and i think jackie will agree with me when we go to schools we have a lot of uh, teachers tell us well our kids can do the math but they can't read reading is the problem well i will i will challenge that statement i don't think that reading is the problem i think that they don't understand what they're doing in math I think that they are being taught to do math rather than to understand the math. And so Alberta education has defined numeracy as follows. Numeracy involves acquiring and applying the mathematical knowledge and skills needed to engage with quantitative and spatial information in a variety of situations. Numeracy is embedded in learning experiences across all subject areas. It is foundational, allowing students to make informed decisions as knowledgeable active participants in our dem democratic society. And so you will find numeracy outcomes in your other subject areas. Alberta Ed did a great job when they uh, lined up the numeracy progressions with subject areas like language arts and um, science, social studies. And I'm going to tell you a, a really quick story. I was doing a session in Greater St. Albert Catholic, and it would have been a, uh, a good, I would say, six, seven years ago. And I was doing a session, here I am, the math consultant, and I'm doing a numeracy workshop with my high school, um, high school English teachers, English and social teachers. Well, you have to know that I was really scared to start this session off with them. I was quite worried because um, I remember when someone told me back in the 90s, or the late 80s, that I had to teach literacy in math. And I kept thinking like, this is not my forte. This is not what I know how to do. But anyway, 
I remember doing this session with these social, uh, this English teachers. And by the way, it was in, it was in January. It was right before diploma exams. So you can imagine a lot of these teachers didn't want to be there because like they had to get their kids ready for their diplomas last minute ditch effort to get them ready. And, um, one of the English 30 teachers said, no, Yolanda, actually, I'm quite happy to be here because I know I need to teach the numeracy skills in my English class, but I don't just don't know how. So we were doing some activities. And during this one activity, this teacher who I highly respect, who teaches English 30, said, oh, good Lord, I just realized something. I teach a novel. In this novel, um, there's a lot of stuff about um, this car race, where this car is going a certain a speed, and it's quite it's quite important that um, the kids understand the whole car, car speed chase and everything like this, and how far they were going. But Yolanda, I just realized my book was written in United States. And it's all in miles per hour and um, in miles. Like they were traveling th this many miles and they were going this many miles per hour. I have, I don't think my kids actually understand how far that is and how fast they were traveling. I have never thought about doing the actual conversion from miles per hour to kilometers per hour or miles to kilometers. And I, and I had this, aha moment thinking, yes, this is it. This is exactly where you can apply those numeracy progressions in whatever you're teaching. Because yes, that's an absolutely excellent, excellent um, uh, idea of where to do that. And that is where it's needed in, in her English 30 class. And she goes, the first thing I'm going to do when I get back to my school is I'm going to talk to my kids about that book that we read about a month ago. And we're actually going to do the conversion so that they under kind of get a better understanding. So it's really important that we apply those um, opportunities, take those opportunities and apply those skills that we teach in math into other subject areas. For example, mapping, um, how, how, how far things are in kilometers or in miles, for example. So they also in Alberta, Ed, they talk about spatial information and quantitative information. And so when we were asked, when I asked you, what do you think of when you think of numeracy, I didn't see very much of the um, spatial information. For example, that's the physical location of objects or people or the relationship between objects of people. Spatial visualization. Um, management of space, measurement, conversion, location and direction, time, whereas the quantitative information is um, understanding the magnitude of numbers, using the numbers, being able to make the calculations, knowing when to make those calculations, talking about the patterns and relationships, data and probability. So really in the quantitative, that's a lot of the stuff that we teach in the math. Whereas the spatial, we really need to, um, we really need to do a little bit better in that. When we put together our curriculum, our literacy progressions and our numeracy progressions, that's when we get literate and numerate students. Our curriculum is the foundation of getting those kids to being numerate and literate. But you can do very well in math without being and not being be numerate. Whereas you cannot be numerate without doing well in math, if that makes sense. So for example, the numer numeracy progressions, they go right across from kindergarten to junior high. Now they go, um, they will used to be high school, but I think they're revamping the high school progressions. Um, but they give examples of what students should be able to do at the end of each division. So it's not grade specific, it is talking about a division. So for example, if you were to look at yours in division two, they have three years to be able to do that, but we just wanna make sure that you are aware of numeracy progression. So do 
read, do click on that little I that Jackie showed you yesterday when you're looking at your outcomes, at your learning outcomes, and do look at what kind of literacy and numeracy progressions can I be working on. The definition of math, if you look in the dictionary, this is from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it is the science of numbers and their operations, the interrelations, combinations, generalizations, and abstractions, and of space configurations, and their structure, measurement, transformations, and generalizations. So really, it's all about the arithmetic, the, arith uh, the algebra, the calculus, geometry, trigonometry, they're all branches of the math but knowing when to apply them in real life is the numeracy. Okay, so there are math learning progressions and uh, Pearson, Pearson uh, put, put, hired, and I'm so proud of this document because uh, Pearson hired Dr. Lynn McGarvey from the University of Alberta to put together um, math learning progressions. How do students learn the math? What are the progressions that they go through? And so what they did was they did the progressions in both English and French in um, five strands, the number strand, patterning and algebra, measurement, geometry, data management, and probability. And it's just a small little uh, book that when you open it up and you take a closer look, they have the big idea for each um, mathematical concept. And then she has the concept, this conceptual thread from kindergarten all the way through grade nine, how someone learns to understand how to do something in math. And then what um, she, it helps us as teachers to say, okay, this is what I'm working on today. My students aren't getting it. And you're able to look back at some of the concepts, um, some of the progressions and see my students are weaker in this area. And so in grade four to six, same conceptual thread follows through grade four, all the way to grade six. And then it on the next page, it continues all the way to grade um nine from seven to nine, same concept, how it all builds. And so it does tell us that math is very foundational, that it is built upon, concepts are built upon each other. And so we really need to do a really great job in the early year years and going back to the um, first slide that I showed you about the study that Duncan did, found that if kids do not have that foundation, they start to struggle throughout all of the school years. Gordon Fletcher did a, a Fletcher, um, but his um, website page is called Fletcher. He did an awesome job with making videos about different uh, big ideas. And so when um, I send out your slides at the end of today's session, there's interactive slide. Um, this is an interactive slides with, uh, if you just click on it, you can get to see the progression of, for example, uh, counting, the progression of addition and subtraction, progression of division, and basically um, everything that Lynn McGarvey has in her book, he has in the video. And so it's a, um, it's a great little resource that you could get. And yes, uh, someone just said, can you order this directly from the Pearson website? Yes, you can. I'll give you the link. Uh, it is, you would just order it from your area uh, manager or um, Alberta manager if you wanted to, because there's one for the North, a manager for the North and for the South. And there's also one, a manager that is provincial. And if you tell them that you came to this session, you will get a 25% discount. I, I Sorry. I, it's either 15% or 25% discount. And so these are absolutely uh, fabulous resources to have on hand as teachers. If you're using mathology, uh, the mathology is built upon these progressions. And so you will see every outcome is linked to a progression in your mathology.ca. Okay, so I'm just going to let Jackie take over and she can um, take over the slides. So I will stop my share and get Jackie to do the share. Are there any questions about um, 
any questions regarding the uh, difference between math and numeracy? Nothing. Okay, thank you, Carrie, for sharing that. Yeah, I actually have that in our slides that I'll share at the end of today. Um, but I appreciate you putting it into our link because, yeah, uh, Edmonton Public did a great job with providing us with some great uh, activities for parents. Awesome. Thank you, Sianna, for the first part. And I get to take over for the second part on some resources. So just so everyone's aware, I'm a very much uh, choose your own adventure kind of person, which means as I'm going through things, um, I'm going to talk about some resources for a little bit. Then I'm going to give you five minutes to find them, investigate them, uh, bookmark them, save them to your drive, uh, just so that you know where some of these things are. And as I'm talking, if you want to dive deeper into some of those resources as you're taking a look at them, please feel free to do so. So the first place I'm also, I will just hold on, Jackie. And one of the things I will say is that the slides that we will be giving you at the end of today's session, the interactive slides, will have li those links so that you don't have to save them because she will be going, jumping around and going there. Just know that if you just want to sit back and watch, you can sit back and watch. Or if you want to uh, do the clicking also, you can do that. But you will get all of these links at the end of today's session. Awesome. Thanks, Yelena. So this part over here, um, the Alberta Regional Professional Development Consortium, we have a, a place over here to access the new curriculum. And the one thing I want you to be aware of, if you're a French immersion teacher, there's an English version and then there's a Francais version. So if you teach in French, you might want to click on that one. I'm going to go and show the examples all in English as we go through. But everything that I'm showing you has a counterpart or the French version of that. So when you get to the website and you're taking a look at it, uh, what you want to kind of do is be aware of that. And so this is what the uh, site looks like that I'm going to take you to first. <clears throat> and where you want to kind of jump to is to click here uh, to access the um, new uh, curriculum and the components that belong to the curriculum. That one jumps you to New Learn Alberta. And what we want to do is I just wanted to show you the, some of the resources. So this part, I'm just going to go through. Uh, quickly because we have an awesome toolkit that we created as math consultants, both in French and English, that kind of culminates everything that's in here under the math portion. So this over here, when you click on math and you come inside here, there's all kinds of stuff. Don't get sick. I'm just going to scroll through all these things, but I'm just trying to show you that there's so many resources in here for you to take a look at and to be able to access from kindergarten all the way through to grade six. And with this program, um, as you take a look at it, you can see that there's lots of pages on here. What we decided was because there was so much information on the math resources over here, we created a document that summarizes some of the key pieces that teachers are like, ooh, I really like these ones. These are the ones I want to showcase. Um, so I'm going to show you that document in a minute, but this is one that you might want to bookmark because there are some great resources. And we know we, you teach more than math and you teach ELA and science and, and all those kind of components. So this is the part right here. If you wanted to switch to the Francais version, please be aware that once you come into the math resources, this is the part over here that will help you if you're teaching French immersion. So I'm not going to go too much over this because... This part, let me get out of here. Um, we created this ARPDC math toolkit, and it looks something like this. And the toolkit also comes in, and I'm just going to put the links in here because people might want, are going to take a look at some stuff in a minute. I'll do that, but, Jackie, go ahead. 
Oh, that's okay. I got it here. I got them all ready to go. And then there's a French version. So here's the French version. I just put in there is the second one. The first one is the English version. And what's nice about this resource that we have here is we've taken a lot of the stuff on our ARPDC website. And what we did is we organized it into the different categories. So you can find things very quickly. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to showcase some of these resources. I'm going to talk about it for a little bit. Then I'm going to give you a few minutes to take a look at that resource. And then at the end, after looking at a couple of the resources, what I'm going to do is I want you to make a note with a piece of paper, if you don't mind, in front of you. Things that are like, wow, like you want to tell everybody else in this group that you found this. And then uh, maybe some stuff that you'd like to share with your colleagues, because I'm going to get you to text annotate at the end some of those things that you've noticed. So if you can make note of that as we kind of go through, uh, that would be great. So I'm going to go to the toolkit. <clears throat> I'm on page four. The first one that I'm going to start with is the numbered outcomes. So what happened is what we did, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what we did was we took the outcomes and um, numbered them. So some people are probably taking a look and going, well, why would you number the outcomes? But what happened was in the last curriculum, remember we had patterns and relations and it said number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Well, this curriculum didn't have those numbers in there. And so what happens is what we want to kind of take a look at is I'm just going to click here for the full numbered one. What we did is close your eyes, don't get sick. I'm going all the way down to grade four, six. Um, what we did was we took the outcomes and for example, here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are the numbered outcomes. And you can see here on the far left how they work is this. The first number that you see is the uh, grade level. So if it's, you're teaching grade five, it's going to be grade five. If it's grade four, it'll say four. The second um, letter inside there will be the organizing idea. So five and one means grade five number, the very first learning outcome. Now take a look at this one over here. And then on the one on the far right, it says six and 1.1. What that means is the 0.1 means in this outcome, students investigate magnitude with positive and negative numbers there's uh, more than one row of understanding. So you can see here, this says 6N1.1, then I'm gonna go down a little further. Same learner outcome, students investigate magnitude with positive um, and negative numbers. So this is the second big idea and not, and we can't forget there's even a third one, 6N1.3, students investigate magnitude with positive and negative numbers. So that one has three rows of understanding, knowledge, skills, and procedures, three big ideas underneath that learning outcome. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why do I need numbers with my learning outcomes? For some teachers, they really wanted the numbers because they work with teachers. They want to quickly in their planning guide that they're working on, on their daily plans, on their unit plans. They just want to quickly just write, this is covering 6N1.1 and 6N2. And they wanted to be able to just use that because there is a lot of information to write out all the learner outcome, all the cusps. So the numbers are there as a reference to be able to quickly pinpoint what I'm talking about. And those numbers are going to permeate the year plan. Those numbers are going to permeate the curricular comparison document. So you can see here that this document looks exactly like uh, the document you would uh, download from New Learn Alberta, but it just has the numbers attached to them with 
the learning outcome. So hopefully I explain that clear enough and you'll be able to kind of take a peek at that um, in, a, in a minute. So that's one thing I wanted you to kind of take a, a, take a look at. And then the other piece that I wanted you to take a look at is, let me go back here, back to page four. Um, the other piece is with the curriculum, um, we also have created a resource that has uh, the financial literacy added to it. So you'll see here that as you go through this document here that says financial literacy with it, the financial literacy we've added, that's a PEW outcome, physical education and wellness, but some teachers are teaching the uh, wellness portion within the classrooms. But we added the financial literacy just for you to have an awareness of what is in the financial literacy with your grade level. So there's one document that doesn't have the financial literacy and then another one that does have the financial literacy. Oops, sorry, let me have so many tabs open here. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at is this component here. We have the curricular comparison and the parent communication and um, Yolanda is gonna talk about the scope and sequence. So the curricular comparison document, I'm just gonna open it up. So this is what it looks like. You can pick grade five, I'm gonna pick here. What was created with this is, the reason we did this was teachers were like, okay, so what can I keep from grade five? What are things that I taught in grade five that is gonna go into this current curriculum? So I want you to be aware on the far um, left-hand side, so uh, Kristen, just to be clear, we don't teach financial literacy in math classes, the phys ed. The phys ed teacher does, but some schools have some teachers teaching the wellness component of financial literacy. You gotta make sure at your school you're aware of who's teaching what. Um, that's why we put that document onto there, but it's also an awareness for teachers as they're teaching their math curriculum, but that's correct. Yeah, good question, Kristen. So in this curricular comparison document, you can see on the far left-hand side over here, this is the old curriculum. So what we did was match up those specific outcomes with the new outcomes that you will be teaching. Now, some of you might be like, I've never taught grade five before well, then this document might not be important to you because you don't have grade five material that you need to scan through and look through. And this might not be important to you. The only important part will be the second part. So this first column over here is old curriculum. Don't use that. But we matched it with the understanding in the second column. So you can see here, let me make this a little bit bigger. These outcomes here, match this understanding, this knowledge, and that skills and procedures. So addition and subtraction of numbers with many digits is facilitated by standard algorithms. So that's one thing I want you to be aware of. We've color coded the different organizing ideas on top. And the only other thing I want you to be aware of is anything highlighted in yellow are new understandings. So that means these are new understandings that were not in the curriculum you currently taught last year, okay? So what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and take a look at the curricular comparison document. It's on page four. So I'm gonna put that back in the chat. I'm gonna give everybody five minutes to pick your grade level. Just do a skim and scan of it. And in five minutes, I'm gonna go over to the parent communication, okay? And if people have questions as they're skimming and scanning, please put those questions in the chat. Jackie, if you'll allow me, I just would like to um, say a quick goodbye to everyone. I have to leave for another meeting. 
Um, there's a little bit of in and out, but I think Yolanda's on top of it on the participants window. And the one thing I wanted to mention is that these toolkits have four domains, teacher foundational knowledge, planning and assessment, and resources that are the same in toolkits for every new subject that's being implemented. So check out the ARPDC resource site for toolkits and other domains as well. And on that note, awesome uh, start ladies and uh, good end of session to everyone today. And I will see you all on Thursday. Bye-bye. Okay, <clears throat> so the reason I want to give you just a little bit of time is just where you can find things, click on the link, know where it is. I know you're going to get all of this after, but um, the reason I'm just trying to give you some time is it can be overwhelming with all of the information. And so sometimes it's just nice for you to be able to have a chance to just click and take a look. So I hopefully I was clear on the curricular comparison document. Again, the purpose of that document is for if you've previously taught that grade level, what can I pull out from what I taught last year and all the years before that and push it and use it into the new curriculum. So that's the purpose of the curricular comparison. So the second part I wanted to show you was the parent communication. So the parent communication, we've created these parent communications, if you want to pass this on, from kindergarten all the way through to grade six. And so when you click on that link, what we did is we highlighted what your child's learning is. And this was the key piece here, by the end of grade four, because that's the key piece to recognize is that it's going to be a journey through that year. But this is what we're trying to highlight. These are some of the things that your students or your, your child is going to be taking up. So we broke it up into number, 
geometry, measurement, patterns, time, and statistics. And so the big thing for that one over there is you can see we just picked the big ideas, tried to put it as best as we could in parent-friendly language when we were showing it. And then there are some ad additional resources to support your math learner. So there's some parent supports that we have also on the bottom. So this one is pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna go through it that much, but the big thing is this one over here, a lot of teachers have been using them in their newsletter or the school newsletter. They've been putting that uh, parent-teacher interviews so that they can see what some of the big ideas that their, their child is learning. So that one's pretty straightforward. So I'm not gonna go over that too much. You guys can take a look at that on your kind of own time. Uh, so now I'm gonna stop for a minute and I'm just gonna allow Yelena to do the scope and sequence. So this is her part, she's created this document here. And so Yelena, is there one that you'd like me to specifically uh, click on? Sure, just open number and operations, that would be great. Perfect. Okay, yeah, we can just start with this one. That That's great. So using the numbered outcomes and putting them in uh, just kind of a scope and sequence from kindergarten to grade six, uh, what we did was we looked at, um, like for example, in the first row that uh, Jackie has here is number con concepts. So all the way from kindergarten, it's like a, this is like a curriculum progression rather than a math progression, it's a curricular progression. So this is the curriculum. And in kindergarten, for example, uh, composition and decomposition of quantities to 10. And then when you get into grade one, it's now to 100. Now you'll notice that 100 is highlighted in yellow. What that means is it is new to that grade. Um, all changes in our curriculum are highlighted in yellow. So in grade two, it's to a thousand, but um, that's new, the thousand, but it's also the place value understanding starts playing a large role in grade two. And then in grade three, we get to a hundred thousand, which is new, but that's where we start talking about the base 10 system and natural numbers. And what's new in the curriculum there is that it's less than and greater than. And if you can just slide that over, Jackie, so that uh, the grade four, five, six, yes. So on that same number concept, just dealing with numbers in grade four, you'll notice there's really no change to your curriculum. You're still doing decimal numbers, including tenths and hundreds using place value understanding. But in grade five, now we're getting to the number. And I, I had to laugh because you'll notice that um, it's not here, but it should be here. It's not literally in our curriculum, but in grade four, uh, it doesn't say millions but it's implied that we do the millions in grade four because in grade five, we get to 10 million. And so we jump right from 100,000 to 10 million. So it is really implied that we do the, ten, the million in the grade fours. Um, the grade five, uh, again, is 10 million, but then in grade six, we don't really deal with whole numbers anymore because now we're dealing with positive and negative numbers. We're going into integers. And so we're using the additive inverses for um, integers. We're adding integers and we're subtracting integers in grade six. So not now we're not only going to be introducing integers, we're actually going to be doing operations with integers. And so I, I found that this was a document that was needed. So like Jackie said, I had a, a group that we worked on this so that we can see at a glance what's new in my grade level, like what outcome is new. And it's, it doesn't tell me where it came from. It just tells me what is new in my curriculum. And so uh, those of you who are using your own resources that you've had for a while, for example, uh, if you're using your know, Math Makes Sense, um, if you're using any uh, Mathletics, whatever, that hasn't been lined up to the curriculum for you, Jump Math is uh, another one. You can see that if you're just looking at the grade, if you're teaching grade five, um, what outcomes you still really need to look for in other grade levels, because they will not necessarily be in your grade level. And so, Jackie, if you go back to the page, uh, the, the document, the um, toolkit, you will, yeah, uh, yeah, this one. 
and on page four, yes, you will see that there is a scope and sequence for each of the main um, big ideas. So there's one for numbers and operations, for algebra, uh, for geometry, measurement patterns, time, and statistics. And so there are, um, it's, a, it's a rather lengthy document because it lists every outcome in kindergarten to grade six, but only under the strands or the big ideas or the whatever we call them. My head is just overflowing now. Um, okay. Yeah, and the other thing with the scope and sequence, what's nice about this scope and sequence too, as well, is to have those discussions um, with your staff. Like, what are those big ideas across the grade levels? And uh, I sat down with a grade four, five, six, seven, eight teachers. And what we did is we were like, this used to be in grade seven. And so we would say grade seven and grade eight and where we would be able to pull some of those ideas from the scope and sequence. And so that was kind of a, a good way to kind of take a look at that. Uh, is there anything else you want to add, Yolanda? Nope. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions about us? So how do you recommend students, oh, deal with the students coming from the old curriculum? Um, again, let's go back to the document that Jackie shared from Alberta Ed, the bridging document, um, as they do say that they do give us some ideas of how to bridge over um, from the old to the new. But yes, Christina, I, I'm not going to, um, I am not going to um, sugarcoat it. Grade sixes have, a lot of new outcomes that students are not prepared for. There's no question about it. And so there's going to be a lot of learning this year from all of us. Um, and teachers are going to be right on the front line about saying, telling us we need support with how to bridge this, bridge this concept. And that's where we will uh, do our best to help you with that. But great idea, great questions. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going and uh, thank you. Some people saw some little bit of links that were not correct and stuff for thanks for letting us know that I made some notes yes. of that. Um, the big thing here is the year to glance sample plan. So that's what I'm going to go to next. The big thing that I want people to be aware of with the sample year to glance. So there's interactive year to glance and sample. The interactive, the only difference between the two is what I did with this one, the interactive year to glance, I've linked key vocabulary um, that teachers uh, would go, what is that? What What's a natural number? Uh, what does a linear equation mean? So these ones over here uh, link to key vocabulary. And as I'm talking about that, I'm just going to jump to this one as well. So remember the one that I showed you at the beginning. So teachers were really appreciative for something like this. So anything that's blue, it's hyperlinked with key vocabulary that I thought teachers would be, ooh, what does that mean? And so when you click on these, uh, it'll take you to the definition of what they mean. And I know this is kindergarten, grade one, grade two, but if you go further down, this document is uh, hyperlinked with all the key vocabulary. And teachers were really appreciative of this because they were like, when I would work with them and build year plans or unit plans, teachers were like, what does this mean? And then they had to Google it and Google it and Google it. And so they really appreciated that they could just click on a link and from that link, uh, what would happen, they would get a definition for that. So that's just kind of an aside with the numbered outcomes that I talked about at the beginning. So we're going to go back to the toolkit and we're going to take a look at the year to glance. So with the year to glance, I'm going to go to grade six. And anytime I go too quickly on this, there's an awesome, uh, our colleague Chris Zarsky did awesome little videos. You click on the video, and it explains the intent and purpose of how these documents were built. So again, like I said at the beginning, we're giving you lots of things to look at, but for you to be able to piece apart and take apart when you have a minute. So the year to glance, 
takes looks something like this. I want everybody to understand what these year at a glance is, is when they were created, um, what happened was Chris was working with a group of grade four, grade five, grade six teachers. She took in, uh, her and her team took in 20 plans from those teachers. And what they did was create these sample year at a glances. So these weren't from consultants who haven't been in a classroom. These were actual teachers who sat down and said, I think this is what should happen in September, October, November, collected all of them, and then created a year plan. With these year plans, though, you'll see that a lot of things are going to be spiraled. And what I mean by spiraled is you surface teach this idea for a little bit. Then you dig deeper and then you dig deeper at the end of the year. So you'll see that some of these outcomes are going to be repeated. We know we need to repeat outcomes over and over and over again, especially in grade four, five, six, and that idea of spiraling because students have background knowledge that they don't have, that they're ready for those outcomes. So surface teaching, like when talking about investigating magnitude, positive and negative numbers, Maybe in September, we're just talking about what they are, how a temperature affects it. The smaller the number, it's actually bigger when we talk about the negative realm. And so we might just introduce integers like we did last year in grade six. Then later on, we start adding integers. And then finally, at the end of the year, we're adding and subtracting integers. So I just want you to know that you might see outcomes that are repeated. So again, what happens is number one, you have the learner outcome. And then what we did is we couldn't fit all the cusps in here. So underneath, these are the understandings. So in the cusps, knowledge, understanding, skills and procedures, we couldn't fit that all in. The year plan would have been 20 pages long. And so then what happens is over here, this is the understandings you can see underneath here. Anything in yellow, okay, is just some ideas of how to kind of go back and where to start with and how to use it. The stuff that's in the green, because it says here, this is the bridging needs. So this document has been designed to consider the bridging needs. So here, in this kind of greeny blue part, in September, you're going to review math facts 12 times 12 with different strategies, and this should be gone going. So that's going to happen in September, October, and November, on top of working with positive and negative numbers. And so the stuff that's in the yellow are just suggestions of stuff that you could start with that would help with those outcomes. This is a sample year at a glance. Some of your districts have your plans already laid out for you and everyone's following the same year plan. Some districts, you have your own ideas of where you want to put it. But you can see here that we're not just doing number in September and October and November. If you look further, we have some geometry we're going to introduce with the students. In September and October, some coordinate geometry and some algebra. Those are the four organizing ideas that we're working in the first third of September and October and November. And the reason I, when I work with teachers and create year plans, I always tell teachers, don't start with number. I say, maybe start with some geometry, start with um, places where they feel successful. Use your starters as places where you're going to use number, but maybe the first week, week and a half, you do some geometry, some, some building of things, talking about things, shapes, those types of things, because it encourages students to get more excited about the math that they're working on. Because they know that a lot of them say, I stink when it comes to number operations. And if we start with something they stink right off the bat, we have discipline problems and we have some difficulties with students. And so this is kind of a piece that's, that's kind of tough for students. So I'm going to give everybody like a couple of minutes just to look through. I kind of went through uh, what the green part means, what the yellow means. 
Um, what I've done with teachers is we've taken this document, printed it on 11 by 17 piece of paper, and the parts that we liked in the different time frames, we kept them. And then what we did was we also cut pieces apart if we wanted to move it around. So where you find that is on this page here, on page five. Go ahead, take a minute um, to kind of, oops, sorry, page four, and take a look at that. Um, Jackie, there is a question. Is this document in French? Um, uh, if does it exist? Thing, um, obviously, I can't read French. I don't understand French, but I do know if I go to the French document, and I just found something that um, I put out there. Yes, it should, because I know that our French counterparts. Um, worked on that so it, it's i don't read french either but is it there's nothing here that has the year like that's the one i sent the um document of m to six okay second last one i think that's uh, the french version i'm not 100 percent sure but for french teachers i i need to uh, let you know um, i wish madeline was here at this point but for french teachers i know she has her consortia working on translating every single document that we do in english um it may look different in french but everything that we we do oh yeah everything we do in english is supposed to be translated yeah so th this should be translated um let me just do some digging and and i'll help find that so just give you a couple minutes to look at the year at a glance. And, and if you have any noticings or wonderings, please put them inside the chat. Um, I just wanted to let French, some French teachers know that, uh, so like grade four, grade five, grade six, um, our colleague, what she did was suggestions for September and October of things to do. Um, this is not done in English, it's just done in French, but suggestions of what to teach um, in grade in September and October. And she did a session and then she has all the materials that go with it. So that might be something for French teachers that they might want to take a look at. Um, that's located on the, the ARPDC uh, website. So I was just trying to look there for the year to glance. And I know that the year to glance was being worked on. So just check in here to see if you can find the year to glance in here. Oh, 
Okay, so hopefully I've just given you a little bit of time to take a look at the um, year at a glance sample plans that were on there and the interactive year at a glance. <clears throat> so that's a piece there that you can take a look at. For the people who teach split classes, I'm going to talk later on about these Google Slides printable ones where you can print these off. And then what I do is I, I cut them out and I work with teachers and, and we move them around and create a year plan. So uh, just for time's sake, I'm just going to keep that kind of to the end for those split classes for the teachers who want to kind of take a look at it, because I want to have some time to show everybody this one. The Calgary Board of Education has created these uh, mathematics tasks, and then you can click on the resource here. Uh, I'm telling you that teachers have said, Jackie, these are very awesome, open-ended, strong questions to teach understanding for all levels. This is not rote practice. You guys can find those anywhere. But these ones here specifically have your uh, organizing idea, your learning outcomes, and then the big understandings underneath. And then you click on these uh, hyperlinked components and these hyperlinked components will take you to uh, really important um, components that you could use for, oops, uh, for um, your grade level. And teachers have given me a lot of feedback on this one um, for this piece over here. And teachers have said, wow, these are great things to either use at the end of the unit or the beginning of the unit. And so you can kind of take a look at them. They're all done for every organizing idea, not just number. So just take about two to three minutes to go to the Calgary Board of Education component on the toolkit on page four, oops, sorry, uh, page five, and they're located down here on the bottom. So these are like those very open and Marion Smalls, very open-ended, uh, multiple solutions, multiple strategies in order to solve problems. Um, very uh, intuitive to work with, taking you to sites that you can totally use outside of those links because they're really strong sites. Um, whoever did the work on that uh, document has done a really great job to get those really good um, interactive um, and high, like low floor, high ceiling activities where all learners can participate no matter what level that they're at. And I'm just going to add in here, Jackie, I have heard from so many people that are trying and using those, especially like the, I worked with the boards uh, that were doing the K to three and they were saying like the, this resource is amazing, amazing. And like those of you that are here from the Calgary board, thank you so much for sharing this because it really is an amazing resource that you put all this time and money into. Um, and to share it with the rest of us is beautiful. Okay, and then I will add in here that Edmonton Catholic, and I know we do have some Edmonton Catholic teachers here, and I actually even know that there's one year that worked on these um, curriculum crates that they have opened up to Alberta. And so um, there's also, if you were to take some time to take a look at their curriculum crates, they also line things up. So Jackie, can you just click on the link? Um And what they did was, if you just go to grade five, yeah, great, perfect. And go to math. And it's in French and in English already translated for you. And so, oh, great, Jackie, thanks for uh, picking a French one for me. I can do it in Ukrainian for you if you want. 
Okay, so um, they've lined it up with um, um, big ideas, and they also what they did is they um, you can you can read the 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 intro yourself, but if you just go down, the lesson title is recognizing variables, and what they did was they also highlighted nouns and verbs for the learning outcome, so interpreting algebraic equations, so just keep going down, and there should be, they lined up the cusps, the learning goals, and they've given ideas there for uh, lesson plans. And everything has links to it. They have done a great job with this also. It is not on the ARPDC website because we still don't have permission from them to put it on the ARPDC website. But we do have permission to share this link with you so that you can take a look what was done. So as I'm saying all this, and I'm also reading people that are still you know, going to teacher, teacher pay teacher. They're going to um, American sites. Um, I'm just going to say, why would you do that when the work has been done for you already? You don't have to go down that rabbit hole looking for materials because the materials have been done for you and they are directly linked to the Alberta curriculum. And so the number one place that I would say, um, I will, Selena, I will give you the link right away. It's, it's going to be on the slides in just a second that I will put into the chat. Um, it's there. So Calgary and Edmonton have both shared their the work that they have done over the last few years. And uh, between those two, really, you've got so much. And the uh, ARPDC website. And um, I have to tell you, um, the other one that I, I uh, the ARPDC and Learn Alberta yesterday where Jackie showed you the uh, gizmos. Um, really, you don't have to go buying new things and paying for more. There's way more than you need that are directly linked to Alberta. Okay, so uh, I'll let you go, Jackie, and I'm going to find the link for the slides to share with everybody. Sure. Thanks, Yolanda. Um, I just want you to uh, be aware, too, if you have counterparts, kindergarten, grade three, everything we pretty much showed you here is also available for kindergarten, grade one, grade two, and grade three, okay? So on that uh, toolkit, that only says four to six, but if you go to the ARPDC website, which you'll have that link to, you can access year to glance plans, curriculum comparisons, the numbered outcomes with the vocabulary supports. Um, all of those are, are located if you are a school from K to six. And so before we leave, I just wanted you to, in the chat, Maybe one thing that was like a wow for you from today that you're like, oh, this was worth sitting through an hour and a half for just this one thing or something that's useful to you. Um, please feel free to put it in the chat or please use the text annotate now that we all know how to use it nicely and be able to kind of play around with that. So if you just take a minute to do that as we summarize today, that would be awesome. Oh, I love how they're using the... Um annotate thing too also yep. right onto the slide beautiful yeah and and the big thing is the uh there's lots of resources so what i would suggest is if you haven't made a year plan yet take a look at the year plan cut the year plan out move things around if you don't like where they are if there's not enough geometry in september october and november pull some of the geometry strands from someplace else start that first week off with that and so as you kind of go through that um, take each piece at a time and we really want to let you know that we are here to help and support and we I'm going to stick around for a little bit at the end to help some of those um, teachers who have uh, cross grades that they're working with and maybe to answer any other questions that didn't get answered today we're more than welcome to stay for a little bit at the end. Thank you for all the feedback on the wow and, and useful components. Please share these resources and links to um, your counterparts or people that you work with. 
Uh, thank you for listening to us talk most of the time, but we wanted to try to get all the information to you so that we didn't miss anything. So uh, we're really excited tomorrow, the verb session that Tammy's going to be doing tomorrow and talking about order of operation with Betty, uh, really uh, comprehensive, deeper dive into order of operation because that's a big one that's come out. So um, that's tomorrow. And then Friday or Thursday, Yolanda is going to work a lot on manipulatives, manipulative use, the uses and abuses of manipulatives. So that's going to happen on Thursday. So Thank you, everybody, uh, for sitting down here for an hour and a half. Hopefully the sun's shining where you're at. If it's not, get outside and go for a walk and feel the joy of the outside. So thank you, everybody. Thank you again for coming. I really appreciate the number of people that are showing up and taking time from their last days of summer. Thank you. And please, if you have any questions, you can always email us or you... Um, can call us too if you want. <laughs> uh, Alice, I'm just checking. Do you mean the bridging documents or the comparison document? Oops. Uh, just, uh, Jackie, just go back to that and save what people have written here.